Hey everyone, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is gonna be all about audiobooks recommendations. So these are books that I think if you are interested in reading them, I would highly recommend going through them as audiobooks because they just work really nicely that way. Either the format, the way it was written, either the writing is really especially beautiful, read out loud, and audiobooks can be so hit and miss. I have probably read about a hundred since I started this channel, and uh, I find that some of them will make the books so much worse, but some of them, and that are included in this video aren't necessarily all-time favorite books, but I have to admit that the audiobook was really, really well done. So let's go through these books. I will not be including uh, non-fictions, which I tend to read a lot of them or listen to a lot of them as audiobooks. I will keep those for a separate video because I do want to do a recommendation video for non-fiction and I did not want to repeat myself too much. But uh, a few of them are still favorite books. I am not going to mention Harry Potter, even though I'm doing it right now. Uh, some of these books are like, you know, so classic. Everyone knows that they are well done as audiobooks. So that's out of the way. Let's go to uh, actual classics because classics can be so intimidating. Let's be real. Uh, sometimes they're not even big, but uh, the writing can be kind of complicated, especially if English is not your first language, like my case. Uh, but the writing is often very, very beautiful read out loud. So for example, I have listened to Pride and Prejudice as an audiobook and really, really enjoyed it. Uh, it was not my first time technically reading it, but I felt like it was still a completely different experience. And what's really great for classics is that there are so many versions. You will find someone that you enjoy the voice of because again, narration can make all the difference, especially for audiobooks, let's be real. Uh, so I personally really enjoyed it. I'll try to find these, like, I'll put the picture of the exact one I did listen to. Uh, but overall, I do recommend checking out classics if that's something you want to read as an audiobook. One of my all-time favorite audiobooks, which is also one of the first ones I've ever listened to. Uh, I got it actually on Audible, I'm glad, because I re-listened to it a million times. And it is The Martian. Uh, I feel like everyone knows the movie, you know, adult sci-fi about a man that is left for dead on Mars and has to survive. And I personally really enjoyed uh, the mix of, you know, funny and science. And the format as an audiobook is perfect because a lot of it is written as journal entry. So you're actually feeling like you're listening to, uh, I was going to say that dude. Wow, I need to stop saying dude all the time. Not my fault, I'm Canadian. Um, that man, uh, he writes those journal entry to, you know, stay motivated and everything and stay sane. And I highly recommend it, again, as an audiobook. It just is perfect that way. But in general, it's a book that I tend to recommend for people that maybe have not seen the movie, even though I feel like everyone has at this point. But it's a very accessible book for someone who's like, I never read books, I want to try, but I feel like I get bored very fast. And this one, once you pick it up, you just can't stop. I mean, I believe it literally starts with something like, I'm fucked. So it's just, it grabs you from literally the first sentence. So definitely one of my favorite audiobooks. I highly recommend that one. Another audiobook that is especially well done, but also a favorite of mine is Circe by Madeline Miller. It is, I was going to say, <laughs> historical fiction. Every time I say that, people are telling me it's fantasy. Yes, an adult fantasy book, but it is about mythology and I tend to always categorize that in historical fiction. Uh, this author tends to uh, do retelling of famous myth and in this one it's about Circe. She also did one for uh, Achilles, the, the Songs of Achilles, the Song of Achilles. And it's also well done, but I personally really adored the voice of the narrator for Circe. So if you are uh, into retellings about mythology, I highly recommend that one because her voice, she could read my freaking grocery list and I would be begging for more. So uh, I think it really made the book even better for me because of it. So highly recommend that one in that format. I also have a few recommendations that are not necessarily my favorite books, but I thought that uh, I did need to be mentioned just because uh, I, if you want to read them, you should read them as audiobooks. The first one is Sadie, which is a YA contemporary mystery. Uh, I feel like the story did not stay in my mind, but uh, this was a winner, I believe, in the Goodreads uh, Choice Award two years ago. And uh, the book is mostly written in podcast format. So very much suited for uh, an audiobook. There is a cast of character also. Uh, if I remember correctly, a young girl, her sister dies and she's trying to figure out what happened. Uh, so yes, if you were looking into that book and you can get it as an audiobook, I would highly recommend you do it that way. Same thing a little bit with uh, Daisy Jones and the Six. I adore the other book by this author that 
The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Adored that book, so I was very excited when this one came out. And I had been told that I needed to uh, go through it as an audiobook, and that is very, very much true. It is an adult historical fiction, uh, basically a fake music group, and the book is written as uh, interviews. So you get a cast of character, it's very engaging. It's a bit short for my taste. I feel like there could have been a bit more meat, but uh, if you do want to go through it, I highly recommend, once again, the audiobook for it. The Poet X, that was a huge surprise for me. I read this because it was once again a winner for the Goodreads Choice Award in the poetry section, which I don't read poetry, uh, but I had been told also to try this one as an audiobook and absolutely true. It is written, is it prose? Um, I don't know, I'm not really into that genre, so I don't know the terms, but uh, if you want to read it, you need to get it as an audiobook. I really like the voice of the narrator, but also just the way it's read out loud, it just sounds really nice. Uh, it really suits, you know, poetry. And uh, some of the sections were written in uh, Spanish, which I don't speak, so it was nice to listen to those. They were also translated right away, so don't worry <laughs> about that. And yes, overall, that was the perfect way to go through that one. A little bit the same thing with uh, Long Way Down, which I believe that was the title. Uh, that one was also a YA contemporary and definitely would recommend it. I find that often uh, funnier books are great as audiobooks, which not gonna include the nonfiction ones in this video, but one that is very famous for being funnier and sci-fi, so a little bit more of my usual genre, is We Are Legion, We Are Bob, which is the first book in the Bobbyverse <laughs> universe. I have yet to continue because uh, it wasn't my favorite, but it's very, very famous, and I do eventually want to continue because I overall did enjoy it. Uh, if I try to summarize the story, this is an adult sci-fi where this dude, let's just go there, this dude uh, <laughs> becomes a spaceship and he's observing other creatures on a different planet and kind of ends up helping them, helping them a little bit. It's a bit confusing to try to describe, but uh, a lot of people really, really enjoyed the humor and I do think that I enjoyed it a lot more because I was listening to it as an audiobook, which again, including it in this video reminds me that I need to absolutely continue. But yes, this is a very popular one for a good reason. One that took me a little bit by surprise was The Diviners by Libba Bray. And it's a pretty chunky book. I think it's about 600 plus pages. It is uh, a YA, uh, would it be considered mystery? kind of paranormal. Uh, it happens in the, oh, is it the 50s in New York? And I thought it was really funny as an audiobook because the voice of the characters, once again, there's a cast of them. You get really attached to them that way. I found that the characters were really great. And I feel like that suits audiobooks a lot. You just get attached to them a lot more that way. And a lot of expressions were really funny to listen to uh, out loud. There was this one in particular that stuck with me and it's the, that's the cat, the cat's meow. <laughs> <laughs> which I couldn't stop laughing every time. So uh, I would highly recommend uh, this series as an audiobook. I am planning actually continuing. Uh, I believe the fourth book came out, so I'm definitely having to catch up here. But yes, uh, if you were looking into reading the Diviners, I am here to tell you the audiobook is great. There's one last one I want to talk about. Um, I'm a little bit on the fence for the overall series in terms of audiobooks, but the, the first one is a safe bet because the voices are okay for the first book. <laughs> And it is Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nevel. Um, I'm saying that because there's a character that appears in book two and three and I cannot stand the voice. I talked about it in, I think it was my disappointing books that I had read that year because I was saying the voice sounded like a bad porn and I stand by what I said, absolutely. But uh, like I said, the first book, it's not included. The book is written again in a mix of interviews and emails, so it really suits audiobooks. And overall, the voices are good. I am personally a little bit offended because there's one of the characters that is supposed to be French Canadian and I am, and I find that the accent was completely off. But it's a different story. Most people will not have an issue with it. So uh, if you want to get into this series, audiobook is not a bad way of doing it, but be warned, book two, you're gonna regret it. <laughs> Out of the hundreds of books that I've read, or I should say listened to as audiobooks, uh, these are probably the ones that I found that specifically that format made them better, more enjoyable than just reading the physical books. So I feel like it should almost be the exception. Usually audiobooks for me are just like the same. It doesn't change much for me. Uh, sometimes it makes the experience even better. And then sometimes it's the complete opposite. I should probably name a couple in the comment section because I remember some of them being particularly painful, but it's usually the exception. So let me know in the comment section. 
What are your personal favorite audiobooks? Which books do you think that because you listen to them as audiobook, you enjoy them so much more than you would have as a physical book? Let us know because we want to know. I always want more recommendations. Don't forget to thumbs up this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe because once again, I am coming up with more videos very soon, including my best slash recommendation video for nonfiction. And a few of them are definitely uh, audiobooks also. I will mention it as I go through the list. And uh, I will be putting more videos on the screen that are coming to check out. And I shall see you in my next video very soon. Bye.